Oh, hello. You arrived. You gave me a surprise. Sorry. I'm Alan. Hello. I'm Alan from EXA Foundation. And we're about to go off on a tour of the International Space Station where we're going to meet an astronaut. I'm so excited. Called Steve Swanson. This is going to be our very first EXA edition. And Steve's going to help us understand some of the challenges that there are about moving around in space as well as eating meals. Mm. Now, just before we go and meet Steve, I think we need a health and safety warning. Because, you know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's important for us to appreciate the lack of gravity on the space station. In fact, as you watch this video right now, you're probably sitting right down. Sitting down. <laughs> I want you to just do this for a moment. Carefully raise your arms and then let them down and up again. Have you noticed as you lift or raise your arms, they feel a bit heavy? And that's because you can feel the force of gravity acting on your arms. Now, we'll put them down again. Now, back on Earth. Gravity acts downwards upon us towards the ground and that helps to keep us and everything else in place. If you take a look around you right now where you are, observe other people and objects. They're all held down by this invisible force that we call gravity. Now on board the International Space Station, gravity doesn't feel the same as it does on Earth. So moving around can be more difficult. Now they have different names for this astronauts. Some call it zero G or weightless environment. I've heard of people call it microgravity. Well, it's because there is, it feels as though there is no gravity. Now, I'm taking you on a trip to the International Space Station, which will be a zero G environment. So your movement will need to be very different. So here's what I want you to do. Imagine right now you are in a zero G environment. Have you noticed how your arms now start to float? <gasps> oh, in fact, oh, my head doesn't feel as heavy. My neck feels a bit floppy. Hmm. Now, how do you think you're going to move around? You might need to pause the video for a moment to think about this. You see, in zero G or microgravity, you can't run, walk, climb or crawl, but you can pull and push against objects to help you, to assist you. Sometimes you'll see these blue grab rails that they can use. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine right now you are floating through the air. Now, using your imagination, look, you don't need to push too hard. Don't get excited. You only need the smallest amount of effort. And I don't want you to hurt yourself or anyone else. Now, it might feel a bit strange doing this here, but tonight... Before getting into bed, before getting under the covers and getting all snug and cosy, instead lie on top of your bed, on your back, and try to practice your zero G movements. Look at the ceiling and imagine you're floating around in your room. Now, should anyone walk in and say, what are you doing? Just explain you're practicing your zero G movements. Huh. Now. If you want, you could pause the video right now to practice your zero G movements. Ooh, now, this is a model we can zoom in on of the International Space Station. And we're going to go and visit it shortly. Let me zoom in a bit more closely. Now, oh, look at that. Oh, I, I can use my hand to rotate it. What a peculiar looking vehicle it is for traveling through space. Now, I bet when I was talking about zero G environments, you were probably thinking, whoa, that sounds like so much fun. And you can probably think of lots of games that you could play in zero G. However, 
microgravity, weightlessness, it can cause lots of problems. And that's what we're going to have a look at now. So it's time to go and find Steve and see if he can explain how he moves about in zero G. My gosh, notice just how noisy it is. You know, in a moment, I might ask you to pause and tell me what you can hear. Listen carefully and you'll hear lots of noises. Let's just pause there, in fact. Here's a question. What noises could you hear? Did you, did you hear just how noisy it was? <gasps> I ask you, what do you think is causing the noise? You might want to pause the video and think and talk about it. Let's go back and watch the first few seconds and then I can tell you the answers if you haven't already figured it out. So there's fans, lab equipment, computers and machines. Oh, I did that quite quickly. Let's go through and talk about them again. So I'll just pause here. Fans. Well... You have to remember that on board the ISS, they have to have an air filtration system. And that's to make sure that the air that the astronauts breathe is cool, clean and dust free. You can't open a window on the space station, so the air has to be recycled and purified. Now, also, there's the computers and test equipment. They generate quite a lot of noise. The ISS, it's an enormous science lab that conducts lots of experiments to help us understand more about space as well as travelling and living in space. Now just at the end you might have heard voices and activities of other astronauts. Remember, it's the International Space Station. So you'll hear maybe Americans and Europeans and Russians and they could be doing all sorts of things. They could be working, cooking meals, entertaining themselves or even watching a sports game or exercising. Now, what we're going to do is... Oh, we haven't found Steve yet. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's hear all of that noise all over again, and then we'll find Steve. We'll sneak up on him, maybe. Because that's the thing you can do in a noisy environment. You can creep up on people. Let's do that. Now, we're getting close to Steve's quarters just around the corner here. Shh. Ready? No, we best not frighten him, actually. We'll just say good morning. Steve. There he is. Hello, Steve. Hiya. Hey, sup, dog. This is what we normally do, right? This is work. This is the whole tour. Mm -hmm. Start and finish right here. Steve. I'm on my computer. Yeah. <laughs> You show us some of your zero G moves. Come out of your bedroom. Come on, your quarters. Come on, tear away from your computer. Show us how you move. Oh, showing hey, off. Mom, no hands. <laughs> you have hands. <laughs> no feet. Right. It's roomy. Now, Steve, can you help us understand a little bit more, okay, about where we are? All right, welcome to the International Space Station. Here's a tour. We're starting right now in Columbus. And if you look on this little iPad right here, there's a picture of station. And right here, that's Columbus. So then we're on the starboard side kind of front area and that module right there, that's where we're in right now. Right, we're gonna stop just there for a moment because what I want you to do, there's something I want you to think about. I want you to, again, I want you to imagine with me that it's morning time. We've just woken Steve up and you've just woken up. So come on, oh, oh, morning time. Now, we need to go and fix ourselves some breakfast to eat. Before we do that, I've got five questions that you need to think about before we can go and have breakfast. After I ask the questions, you could pause the video to think and discuss your answers. Now, way to imagine you're an astronaut on board the space station here are the five questions question number one what would you be able to eat and drink 
for breakfast on the space station? Question number two. Would you need to sit down at a table for breakfast? Yeah, didn't think about that, did you? Question number three. Astronauts, they float around in microgravity zero G. Wouldn't your food float around too? So how would you stop your food from floating around? Imagine getting ugh, some sriracha sauce in the eye. Ugh. Question number four. How would you cook and prepare your meals? Would you need to maybe add water to rehydrate them? And question number five. Now, this is not really a question, this is an activity. If you've got some time right now, I'd like you to sketch yourself and Steve enjoying your first breakfast meal together in zero G on the International Space Station. So if you have time, you could add arrows and labels to identify your food and drink. And then if you just do a circle for the head, you could add in any facial expression. So you could be going like, <clears throat> like this, you could be smiling at Steve. Also show on the diagram how you could stop food from floating around. So there are five questions. So we're going to go and ask Steve now to help us get the answers. Well, that's pretty much the lab. As we move this way again farther aft, we go into node one, which is pretty much just like node two. It's a little older, uh, with the same concept, same design. And what's where we really eat and have that uh, our food, etc., uh, set up a little sort of like a table. Uh, where we watch a little TV, we watch movies sometimes on the weekends here. And this is kind of our, our area for uh, relaxation. Okay. If you look over here, and this is our uh, our table. Now really when we eat, it's more like I think we prepare here. We really don't eat on the table here because there's no reason to eat on a table. So what we'll do is we'll help prepare things here, keep things stuck to the Velcro or the tape as we need it to. And then when we want to eat though, you're actually just holding it here, uh, uh, letting it float or eating it to do what you need to do while you eat. And uh, as we sit around here, if we want to throw on something on a, uh, a movie on or something to watch uh, during uh, while we're eating uh, so that we don't have to talk to each other, that's always gets old. And uh, we'll do that right here as we do it. Heat and This right up? here is our food warmer. Okay. Uh, so uh, we take the packets of food, go ahead, throw them in here, heat them up. And uh, this is actually the art of the week. So we're getting uh, pictures from uh, the, the kids of people who work on the ground force, the ground team, which we truly appreciate. We have their kids send us a picture every week of, uh, closer, of art. Look. So it's like refrigerator art. Uh, we put it on our heater here because we really don't have a refrigerator right here. Mm. So we use that and we have a new one each week on there. So that's that, we have more storage here, here, all the way around. You can also sell the color. If you look around here, it's kind of interesting how it uh, used to be white, but after uh, over 10 mm. years of people it's living messy. on this thing, uh, mm. or over 10 years for sure, uh, it's got a little stained. And that's one thing about eating up here is uh, it's a mess. Every time you open a package, uh, as you think about it at home, when you, you open a package, you pull it to open, but you're actually right here, you're doing, you're putting energy into this package, and it squeezes up and then it goes boom, and it pops. When it pops, <laughs> things come flying out. Oh and my sometimes gosh. Sometimes you contain it, sometimes you don't. And uh, hence, we got uh, stains everywhere. Can you show us where you keep uh, some of the food? I think that's maybe? it pretty much for. Well, over here is where we keep our food. Oh, I should say that right here. It was worth thinking about breakfast. Food storage. Okay. Uh, so, this is always interesting. Uh, so, we have things uh, categorized a little bit into, of course, uh, people's own little food they have, and we have breakfast and sides, etc. So if you want something out of breakfast, you come over here, you look, and of course right now we're hurting for breakfast because we got uh, uh, scrambled eggs, as bad as left, and maybe some sausage patties. We all like uh, granola and uh, um, oatmeal, and so that runs out in about two days for us. For we Every seven days we get a new uh, package of food for that. So. Uh, breakfast isn't always great around here What's for that us. But so we have uh, those around here for that. Again, some more stuff to eat, and that's how we keep it all uh, above your organized head, a little bit What's that? for our foods. Up here is where the meat packages ah, are. Okay. Usually we want to heat something up. Again, these are the type of things you heat up. These are our meats. Throw that in the heater. And then about 10 minutes later, you can eat it. So from here, if we go starboard, we go okay. into just the airlock. Then. Okay. So I thought it might be a good idea for us to come back later on 
and watch what happens when they actually eat together in space. So we're going to watch them, Steve and some of his crewmates, and they're going to have a meal. And, oh, you might find this kind of funny. Watch to see how they open things and what happens to their food as they're eating. Let's go and let's go and play this video. Look, there's three of them. Steve's using the food warmer. What is that floating there? Is that, is that like a taco shell? Yeah, we never asked about washing up. We can come on to that in a moment. So Steve's trying to open up his package. I think he's using his scissors there. Mm, I think he's got some food on his hands. He's going to have to clean them. Oh, look! Over there, Steve. Ah, yes. Some wet wipes you can use to clean up. else can you see when you look around? Look at them speed limit signs. I think that's a joke. You don't know new until you know what's new at Dave and Buster's. Now play 10 new games. Oh man, it's delicious. Get new food, new drinks, and free games. What about this? I mean, what'd you get sriracha sauce? Do you think you put that in? Why, there's taco sauce. Uh, taco sauce, sriracha sauce. Ooh, look, chasing their food around. <laughs> Let's go back and watch that again. What what is it you think you can hear in the background as well? Are they watching like a maybe a sports game or something? Okay. And we're gonna pause the video. And, uh, okay, so um that's it for today. Oh somebody wanted to know about ketchup and sauces so they do have mustard and mayo and things like that and salt and pepper but they only come in a liquid form because can you imagine if you were shaking salt or sprinkling pepper on your food it'd be floating around and oh you'd probably get some in your eyes and that'd be pretty dangerous Ugh, or up your nose Ooh. here's something next time you're having a meal with family or friends why don't you tell them what you discovered about eating and dining and um, moving around in microgravity, zero gravity. So that's all for now. Hope to see you again on another expedition. Bye.